Model of consistency, model of achievement, coach, what you've done at Illinois, four consecutive 20 plus seasons, what has been the consistent ingredient, ingredient in the recipe to get you to where you are? Well, it starts with good players, but I think along along those lines, I think it's um, uh, we've had really high character. I think we've had um, I think we've had a really nice balance um, of of perimeter and inside scoring, uh, which you need. But I think it, it it ultimately comes down to the fact that we've uh, we've been a very good defensive team. We've had great toughness. That that permeates through our program. We try to emphasize the defensive side as much as we can. Last year was um, a little step down, but. Uh, uh, but uh, we're gaining on that. Tournament team, in spite of the fact how inexperienced you guys were last year, uh, you've really made a change in that. You've got quite the yeah. experienced roster. Uh, was that a deliberate move? Yeah, very much so. Uh, we were the second youngest Power 5 team last year. Uh, a lot of growing pains. Uh, very, very proud of what that team, we had a great year. That team was, uh, uh, you throw Terrence Shannon and, and Matthew Meyer in, into that as, as new guys, as transfers. Uh, we lost Luke Goody, who had a tremendous amount of experience due to an injury. Uh, but um, we set out this year to get older. And I think we're at a unique time in college basketball with uh, the COVID years and the extra year. Uh, 23 and 24 year olds. We've got a guy on our, on our roster that scored 1,600 points in his career. We've got another one that scored 1,000. We've got another one that's been a starter for four years. Um, so uh, very intentional on our part. Uh, despite the fact their experience, a lot of guys are going to know each other for the first time, and that's probably where a trip like Spain uh, becomes helpful. Uh, what did you discover about this group overseas? Yeah, I think that uh, versatility. Um, I think early on, I, you know, it's kind of a good or bad thing. I think everybody thinks we have depth. Uh, you know, it was a challenge uh, as as you wait on guys to make decisions and Coleman and and Terrence, uh, what their futures held at the next level. Uh, you know, we went out and we recruited, um, you know, a couple front guy, front court guys, uh, Quincy Gurrier from uh, from Oregon, uh, Marcus Damask. Uh, you know, in anticipation that their versatility, if they did come back, would allow uh, would be different. But if they if they did stay in the draft, that we were going to be okay. And uh, so I think we've got a lot of depth there. Um, and uh, you know, I think that's something that uh, we saw that in Spain. Marcus didn't play in Spain due to a little hamstring. Um, tear, but uh, uh, he's back in practice and healthy, and uh, so I like our versatility. I think that's one of the things we ha that, uh, that we have, and uh, we'll see how that plays out. Coach, you went on record saying you want a player-led program, and I think those are the best teams. When the culture extends past, when coach isn't in the huddle or coach isn't there, who are you? Uh, that being said, who do you identify as those leaders? Yeah, I think we're still working through that hierarchy. Um, I think the one thing that's happened this year, and I um, we don't have rules. We've got standards, and and every player got up in the in in their meeting and and talked about things that could be really positive for us, and also things that could tear us down. And uh, we've made that list of standards. Now it's my job and our coaching staff's job to help hold those guys accountable. It's amazing how alike everybody was thinking, and that was very different from from last year. Uh, so. Uh, you know, we'll do that. We'll, I think that uh, the hierarchy of leadership, I think we'll see it from Terrence Shannon. I think we'll see it from Coleman. I think Luke Goody. Uh, we've seen a ton from Justin Harmon early. Uh, Quincy Gurrier gives us a, a guy that uh, has been in a couple different programs and is uh, just a, a very, very mature young guy. So um, we'll see how that all plays out. That's still to be determined. Coach, speaking of different, I know you liked the three, but I know you didn't like the shot selection last year from this group, and that came with the inexperience. Yeah. And you said this team will be different uh, in terms of actual style. How will that style look? You know, we're still going to play fast. I'm still a big believer yeah. in analytics, scoring under seven seconds. Uh, we did an offensive rebound very well, as bad as any team that I've had last year. You know, we've got to get that back. But we took 42% of our shots from the three last year. I'd like to see that 32 to 33. Okay. We might have led the country in contested threes with 16 on the shot clock. You know, it's like throwing an interception on first down in football. You know, you just, they led to a lot of easy baskets and, and breakdowns. So uh, we're working really hard uh, at running better offense, being a better passing team, uh, having guys that um, enable a teammate by the pass. Um, so I think we'll see that. I think we've got better inside outside balance. I think Dane Deja. Uh, is one of our most improved players. Um, I'm excited about his um, upcoming season. He's been 
uh, tremendous in early practices. So, you know, he gives us a low post threat. So we've got to do a better job of, of, of finding that balance. First team preseason guy, Terrence Shannon. I mean, he's an absolute stud. You mentioned him, coach. What do you put on his shoulders for this Illinois team this year to be special? Yeah, more than last year. Last year he was new, he was feeling his way. Terrence is kind of a, a shy, quiet kid um, in, in some ways, uh, but uh, he's gotten better. Um, he really took advantage of the opportunity uh, with all the NBA workouts. Um, you know, he's a guy that can handle being at the top of the scouting report now. Um, and I think he's a guy that elevates. I think he'll make his teammates better. And, um, you know, we've got to get more out of him on the defensive side consistent, consistently. And he's got to be a much better rebounder. Uh, he was a guy that his, his career rebound numbers are very low, but uh, uh, we're holding him to that. And I think he's one of the elite two-way players in the country. Uh, so, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's got to be a dude. Yeah. And uh, we expect him to be that. A guy who's a dude, uh, Zach Eady at Purdue. It seems like that's the group everybody's chasing this year. A lot of talent, but they're that, that number one team with the National Player of the Year. And Zach, how do you approach defending a guy as unique as Zach? Yeah, it's, it's almost, you, you, if you get consumed with Zach, the other guys beat you. And, you know, I, I think that uh, not enough credit goes to, to Matt and Purdue, what they did last year with freshman guards. And, you know, the old cliche, you know, the best thing about freshmen is they become sophomores, uh, <laughs> is scary, I think, for the rest of us. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of pieces there that are really good players. I think uh, it might have benefited them to play overseas this summer and not have Zach. But, uh, you know, yeah, there's, there's no doubt he's, he's – they, they're the best team in the country, in my opinion, not just in the Big Ten, because of Zach. He's, he's a difference maker. Uh, he's, he's so imposing uh, with his size, and you have to pick your poison with him. But uh, I worry just as much about the other guys as I do Zach, understanding he's going to get his double-double. And uh, it's the other guys that can't beat you from three.